Hi, my name is Nick Caruso. Last year I did a training video on splitting a document based upon a conditional value that would be on pages between the document. Here's the document as an example. It's got an invoice number, 9873547. Second page that has that same value. The third page now has a different value, 9873548, which is now a different value, representing page one of three, two of three, and three of three. And if I go to the next page now, you can see now it's four nine with pages one of two and two of two. So this is a seven page example scan document. And we would want to OCR the contents in the top left section here, look for the invoice number, and as it changes, split the document. So let's go through an example here. Here was the sample folder I had provided. It was a zip file containing the following six folders. If you go into the samples folder, here's the image I just showed you. I'm using auto capture here to show a test. In a few seconds here, I should be seeing the output. So it did split the batch appropriately. Let's go through each image. So this is the two page document, pages one of two and two of two. And if I go to the next document, here's one of three and I'll just go to the next document and here's one of two. So it did split appropriately. Now over the last year, I've gotten a ton of questions, which is quite obvious. If I want to rename the file based upon the value it extracted. So the workflow in this training takes a document, runs it through the OCR process, looks in the top left quadrant, goes through some VB script to extract just the invoice number that we're looking for. Once that invoice number changes, create a split sequence, send that split sequence to professional image management to go ahead and split the document. Now by the time it gets here, it's still one document. So when it splits it here into three separate documents, it no longer has context of what was the original values that were OCR. So it doesn't know what to do with that then to send it to the folder. There are lots of ways to address this. The easiest one is using knowledge package files, which is to run a separate thread or a separate workflow that would now look at each individual document, re-OCR that same section, and then use those values as conditional RRTs to send into different routing destinations. I have an extensive training video series on knowledge package files, but here's a quick example specific to just this workflow. So we're going to change this configuration. The first thing I'm going to do here is just make a version of this configuration. Today is June 2nd, so I'm going to appropriately change the file name. All right, now let's add Knowledge Package Builder into this workflow. What this is going to do is it's going to create an XML file of each new document now and any associated metadata, and then send it to a folder, which another task will then pick up. So let's go ahead and configure the Knowledge Package Builder. So most of these settings, you can always do the same thing, activate, embed document, which means put the document in the XML file. Include field values is always a good default. Exclude fields with empty values, it's fine, and I usually say delete original documents. I click OK, and then I'm going to configure my send to folder workflow. Currently, my send to folder workflow is configured to output to the output destination I previously showed you. I want to create a separate folder as just my temporary folder to be used by the separate task. Let's go ahead and create that folder structure now. So right now I have a folder here called work area, which will contain all of my temporary documents. I'm going to create another folder here called read and file. I'll actually use that same folder name as my task name. And I'm going to create a folder in here called inbound. Now this task is also going to have some other temporary folders that are going to be required, such as a task home and a reject and its own working directory. All right, let's copy that in the clipboard. Go back to our configuration file and put the inbound directory in there. All right, we should be good to go there. Let's go ahead and save this right now and run a test through the workflow. It should create those XML files and put those in those directories. So let's go back up to our samples directory, right click, send to split. And instead of seeing the documents down in the output folder, I'll delete those, those were the older documents, 
I should see them showing up in my R read and file folder, the inbound directory. All right, so here are the knowledge package files that were created. Three knowledge package files representing the XML structure that was created. And this XML structure is an, is an inter internal XML structure for AutoStore. Now these are zip files. So if I op double click on the zip file, you'll see that there's an XML file and the DAT file. So the DAT file is really the image or the TIFF, just renamed .dat. And here's the XML file that represents any internal data associated to this knowledge package file. So I'm going to create a task to process these knowledge package files, which will have the image, re-OCR the image now, and then use the OCR result for any follow-on task. Now I'm going to create a backup of these files, which is really handy in case I make a mistake. I don't have to rerun them through the capture original capture task. I can just copy and paste these files over again and re reuse them for testing purposes. All right, so now let's go back to our configuration here. I'm going to create a task called R, read, and file. Now it's home directory. This is the GUI that Autostore creates. I'm just a little um, precise. I like to specify the home directory um, specifically to each working folder. So as we had created before, I'll turn debugging on. Make this run every three seconds. All right, so now I'm going to use Knowledge Package Loader to load that XML file. I'm going to use Abby to re-OCR that header section. I could use VB Script to parse out that result. Um, now you could draw the box around a very, just the zone that you wouldn't have to do any sort of regular expression extraction. There are, are other videos that go over why you would want to do a regular expression extraction um, to compensate for any shift in the document or skew and so forth. Um, but instead of VB Script, I can use a new component in Autostore 6 called Data Filter. And then I'm going to send, which will extract the invoice number out of that text zone, and then I will send it to a folder. That route could be anywhere. All right, so the inbound directory is going to be, or the input directory is going to be the, that inbound folder that are those XML zip files are in right now. I need to specify the working directory and on error the reject directory. All right, let's go ahead and configure our Abby component. Activate yes, pass through yes. Um, let's uh, zone OCR. Now I could have said pass through no, which means delete the TIFF image and output to a PDF. I could have done that. Why don't we do, actually, why don't we just do that anyway? All right, let's set up our zones. So that's our image. Let's create that zone. So play around with it. So we want to make the zone big enough to compensate for any skew and shift in the document. I have to name our zone. Let's name it invoice number. All right, so we're creating a searchable PDF. We're going to delete the original TIFF. We're going to output the text results into this output zone. Now let's use data filter. So we're going to use a regular expression. I'm going through this quickly because there's plenty of other videos on using regular expression matching and things like that. So um, invoice number extracted will be our new field. The input is going to be the results of our OCR. Uh, so text in zone and page number one. Make sure you do that. I think you can just get rid of dot and then the number and that will just give any result found. The regular expression that we're looking for is starts with 98 followed by any numeric between 0 and 9 that are repeated five times. So it, let's just go ahead and test that. So if I did 9, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it should match. Good. And if I put like an A in there, it should not match. Perfect. All right. So we're good to go with that. All right. So now let's just configure our sent to folder and we should be done. So let's go ahead and put our output directory. And then our file name will be the results of data filter. And I believe I want, I always forget, I think I just want that. Let's give that a test and see what happens. 
followed by an underscore a counter in case it's already in there and the extension. All right, let's run a test now. Say okay, okay, okay. Hit save, restart. Let's pull up our samples, right click, send to split. Well, actually, it should already be processing because I already had those XML files sitting in there. Let's um, open up status monitor. Yep, you can see here it's already running through the process through our R read and file task. Let's see if it got to our output folder. Oh, sure enough, here they come. They're coming in right now. So let's, uh, whoops. Let's uh, size this so you can see them coming in. All right, so here are the first two. And here's the third one, and it should now be processing the second one, the second set of, uh, of the batch I sent through. So if I go to training, work area, R read and file, inbound, you'll see here this task is picking them up one at a time. So it starts with the auto capture task, where this could be your any capture component, creates those XML files, dumps them into this directory, this task picks it up, re-OCRs that zone, uses data filter to extract the SSN and sends it along its way. Remember I made, made those backups of those XML files? This is great for testing purposes where I don't have to reuse the capture component to regenerate those. I can just copy and paste and try over and over again. You know, adjust my settings, restart my config, and so forth. So that's it. I now have, let's go out to the output folder. You can see these files coming in now. Any questions, please uh, contact me at nick.caruso at notablesolutions.com. Thanks a lot.